Hey, I'm Jono. And I'm Kendall. And we're Bike Gearheads. Today we're going to talk to you guys about a new enduro bike from IBIS, the all-new HD6. Yeah, big travel. Earlier this year, IBIS did uh, rebrand with their logo and uh, font and all that stuff. Major change to this bike is the top tube. Right yeah. away, it's, it's straight, which is unique. It looks sweet, yeah. It carries along some of the updates that we saw on the Ritmos that came out a little, little while ago, and the colors kind of all have a new philosophy that's like pastel vibes. It's pretty sweet. What are those colors? Yeah, I'd love to see more color options with a bike. Uh, we have green and black, orange and black, and lavender and black, like the one behind us. Um, so the, yeah, the green is another like more pastel -y color, and the orange is bright, like couldn't miss it, orange. Yeah, if you're conservative, <laughs> I'd say the green's gonna be an option yeah. for you, and if you want something a little flashier, the orange or the lavender will be a good option. I haven't seen the orange in person, but I'd imagine it might work pretty well with some of the orange fox bits, so if yeah. you want to go that route, yeah. probably pretty clean looking. So let's dive into some tech specs, that's what people are here for. Totally, so yeah, 180 mil of fork travel on all builds, which is cool to see, and 165 mil in the rear, which is uh, coil shock compatible yeah. as well. Would you run it with a coil? I think it'd be pretty fun with a coil, yeah. The, to me, the bike felt pretty light. Granted, this is the top tier build, but I think um, having a little bit of extra weight down down by the bottom bracket would actually be pretty nice. Nice. As you can see here, this is a transmission equipped bike, so that means it's a UDH derailleur hanger, which allows you to run the SRAM transmission. Totally. Love seeing that on bikes too, because if you are not running the new transmission, it's just so easy to find a hanger if you're traveling. Fully sleeved internal cable routing, just makes things a little bit easier when you're working on the bike and 64 degree head tube angle in all sizes. I thought this created a really balanced feel. You know, it's, it is a big travel bike and so not going any slacker than that I think is nice and just makes the bike a little bit more nimble and responsive. And the seat tube angle, that's my 76.5. Um, how did that feel while you're pedaling? I thought it was a really comfortable pedaling position and it's also pretty impressive that they can get the seat tube that steep with an 180 millimeter fork. Um, so yeah positive reviews on the C2 angle for sure. The reach on this bike, you were on the large, um, that is a 480 millimeter, is that right? Yeah, 480 on the large, which might sound kind of long to some people at first, but I find with the mixed wheel design, that kind of helps the bike feel more nimble. And so I thought the reach number was pretty appropriate there. And then in that same nimble, playful uh, vein, the chainstays are 435 millimeters on all sizes. For the bigger sizes like this one, that's a little bit short. For the smaller ones, it's quite appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, so they picked a good balance for all the sizes. Yeah, I think it all works together really nicely, exactly. That brings us to the dropper post uh, on this bike. It's a 34.9 millimeter. So a larger diameter than what we're used to with Ibis bikes. Um, I know other brands have been kind of jumping to the, the larger seat posts, but First yeah, it must be something for, you know, strength of the carbon or something in that area. But um, cool thing about the dropper compatibility with this bike is that you can fit up to a 213 millimeter travel post. Um, and so as a taller guy, love seeing it. Yeah, uh, same. Same for me. Yeah. I'm like 213, I think, on my bike. So really? I like having that, that drop. Yeah, it, it makes a big difference. So one of the redesigns with the suspension was this revised lower link. You can see this black piece right above the crank set. Um, they basically just like moved it up a little bit so that you can get to that bolt without pulling the cranks off, which I think is super nice. You know, if you're like maybe troubleshooting a creek or something and you want to get to those linkage bolts quickly, you know, kind of like in the parking lot or something, it's super nice not to have to deal with pulling the cranks off. Yeah, and that upper linkage as well is a little different than what we're used to, like on the Ripley and Ritmo. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a totally, I don't know, not a different design. I guess it kind of is because the rear triangle is like a solid one piece, but I think on the previous yeah. ones, it kind of, intertwine, I don't know. Which yeah, one. it's like a revised yoke. I think it's it's a subtle difference, but um, I thought I thought the rear of the bike felt great, and so I think that contributes a little bit to like the compliance and the, you know, stiff when you need it, soft when you're pushing. Yeah, and visually, just looking at the side profile, it looks way cleaner than those other bikes. Definitely, a clean look. It works well with the straight top tube too, I think. Yeah. Build specs, how many build specs? Can we get a frame only? What, what are my options there? Looks like for the time being, we're only going to be seeing four build options. I would assume this might change. This is the XX axis transmission build. So this is going to be your top spec option. It comes with the carbon hoops from IBIS, uh, the transmission XX drivetrain, and a handful of other carbon bits, as well dropper. as the, yeah, you get the ele electronic axis dropper posts. Um, only two cables on the front of the bike. It's a really sweet option if you know if you can shell out for it. Um, from there, we drop down to an XT build, um, and you can upgrade that to a carbon wheel set if you'd like to. Um, there's another Shimano build. We have the SLX. If you drop down from there, 
Um, also upgradable with carbon wheels and the GX axis, which is going to be the previous gen axis stuff, not the transmission. And that's going to also have the carbon wheel upgrade option. Awesome. So some solid options there. I think there's a, a build spec for, for everyone, really. Yeah, I'm definitely curious to see if they're going to um, maybe make a mechanical uh, lower tier build available. Um, I think one of the coolest things about like the Ritmo and that platform is you had the AF builds, you had yeah. some like GX mechanical builds that made the entry point a little bit more accessible. So something to look out for in the future. Yeah, it would be cool to see uh, HD6 AF. Yeah, that would be cool. And also uh, a frame frame only option, which is available now. Um, and make sure to check out our custom bike builder if you want to go frame up. Yeah, our gearheads are happy to help you build up the bike of your choice. Sweet. Onwards from builds, this bike has uh, five sizing options. We're seeing a small, medium, large, extra large, and double XL. Wow. Pretty sweet. I think it's I think it's a good thing to do for an enduro bike, the double extra large size. Some people just want to size size up um, for stability, you know, if you are riding really gnarly terrain all the time. Um, so that's pretty sweet. Yeah. And, and with the, I guess the bullet wheel size, you can kind of have more flexibility there with sizing? Yeah, I think it's possible, right? Some people like with the rear wheel making the bike feel a little bit more maneuverable, might, you might size favor up. sizing yeah. up. Yeah, exactly. With all that out of the way, what is this thing like to ride? Yeah, on the trail, I was a little bit surprised at first. I was expecting like kind of that big gushy enduro free ride bike feeling, especially with it being uh, mixed wheel and, and like long, long travel. But honestly, it was just really easy to get along with from the beginning. I felt like it was a uh, reactive, really sharp feeling bike, you know, for, for what some of the travel numbers might suggest. Um, I think as soon as I swung a leg over it, the, the chain stay was something I noticed right away. Um, it's, it was Short. Yeah, it's short okay. and like flicking the back of the bike around on flowier trails was really intuitive and easy. And I also found that because of that, um, it was really, really fun to corner. And I think the the 27.5 wheel in the rear plays into that. But um, yeah, pushing into the corners, I mean, it was like, you know, I could just choose the moment when I wanted traction to brake on both wheels at the same time and just push it right into the wall of the berm. It was, it was some good fun. Nice. <laughs> Is this your first time on a bullet? Not my first time on a mullet. This is my first time really riding an Ibis or a DW Link bike for that matter. I had a short ride on a Pivot a couple months ago, um, but this was definitely a more substantial ride. And uh, yeah, digging the digging the DW and the Ibis vibe so nice. far. Uh, I actually found that this bike was more of like a pick your line bike rather than a plow through it bike, which I think might be surprising to some people. but. Uh, I just found that was like kind of a key characteristic of DW. Like it supports you when you dig your heels in and you want to push into gnarly terrain. But, but I find that it also just makes it really easy to like pick the back of the bike up, put it exactly where you need it, um, and really like pick things apart. So I really enjoyed that. I did have um, a little bit of an adjustment with the shock setup. I went um, started with the recommended pressure, ended up stiffening it up quite a bit to get into the high. Like I went to like a 27, 28 percent sag um, and then from there on the trail at first I was like oh it, it, it didn't quite feel harsh it just kind of felt like it was having a hard time settling in um, and then what I ended up doing is just slowing down the high speed rebound a little bit on the shock and then it started to just really feel good and intuitive and I got used to it pretty quickly um, but yeah I think that's an important thing to note about DW is that it is a little bit more linear than some other um, you know suspension layouts uh, and so I think yeah setup setup is important um, and I think the it actually plays really well with the big travel numbers, right? Because you do, you get the added benefit of having more stroke to move through, um, but it is like a nice reactive supportive feel, which also helps a ton on the climbs. Yeah. So to getting to the trails, the climbing, how, how well the climber is it? Because it's a big travel bike. And if you're doing enduros, you're going to have to climb. So you want to be efficient. Yeah, definitely. I think um, mostly riding 29ers myself, the just the, pe the seating position was a little bit different. And at first, I was not sure what to make of it. But as I got used to it, I really don't think it makes much any real big difference. Uh, I think it's, it's more just the rear of your body is a little bit more down. And then your hands are just a little bit higher. And I think as soon as you kind of just settle into that, the steep seat tube angle takes care of a lot of the work and still puts you in a nice, efficient position uh, mm -hmm. to get, get power to the pedals. And I found with the DW Link too, I thought the small bump compliance was actually like really good. Like I've ridden a lot of uh, enduro bikes with coils and it almost just makes 
kind of replicated the feel of a coil shock on some other bikes that I've ridden really well, where, um, yeah, as you're, as you're going over loose rocks and stuff, like we did some fire road climbs, like I just, I didn't notice the back of the bike, like jumping around, didn't really have any tire spin out. Um, it just seemed to stick really well, um, but keep me sitting high in the travel. I didn't really, I didn't reach for the climb switch at all. I don't think anyone, anyone would really need to do that unless you're like actually riding on a road, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I think having it open is what gave me that, you know, that traction that allowed the bike to, you know, just kind of keep motoring without, sure. without any issues. Yeah, with modern bikes, I prefer to have it in an open setting. Just, for me, it climbs better, especially on trails that we ride. Like, there's so many rocks and roots. Like, yeah. you just want it to be active. You don't want it to be locked out. Yeah. Who is this bike for? All in all, I think this totally intends the goal for my this of being a full-fledged enduro race bike. Uh, it, it's definitely a bike for um, gnarly stages too. Like you can do really big transfers, I think pretty comfortably on this bike, strap a bunch of gear to it, still won't be too heavy um, with, a, with a really like supportive pedaling platform. And the nice thing about that design that Ibis uses for the enduro racing too is since it's so efficient, I think it's actually a really great quiver of one for the rider who lives in you know an area with steep mountains where the trails are technical and you're usually just doing rides where you're climbing up to then ride down, you know, some pretty like advanced trails. Um, and with it being a mixed wheel bike too, I know a lot of enduro racers are opting for full 29s, but the option that you then get with this too is it has that playful flair. And if you're um, someone who wants to spend like some time at a bike park and, you know, like really like zone in on some jump lines, like I think the 27.5 rear wheel um, makes jumping just like a little bit more intuitive. Um, it's not necessarily any better, but I think it's just like also does the same thing with cornering. Uh, it's just like a little bit easier to place that smaller, lighter rear wheel. Yeah, so on technical DHs, it's gonna be great because you can just make it go where you want it, want it to. And that too, like it, yeah, it's really, like I said, like a pick your line bike, and I think that rear wheel helps a lot with that. Nice, all right, let's weigh it and see if it really is a quiver killer. All right, let's do it. Any bets oh, yeah, on where this thing tips oh the scale? Oh my gosh, this is, <laughs> it's light for what it is. It's not too bad. I mean, it's, yeah. it's top spec build. It's, it's a still size a big, large. big trial, big fork. Man, I'm gonna go 31. I'm going 34.5. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I'm gonna go 35 pounds, eight ounces. 35? Yeah, this has got an SL on it, right? Or just XX? Yeah, just you, XX. You didn't look at the tire casing, did you? Is it double down? <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is 36 pounds. Is that your final answer? Uh, yes, with those tires. 36. 36. I'm going to stay. I said 35, 8 ounces. John will just change his guess by 4 pounds. See, it's got a very slanted top tube. We you just tell by the way it slides. We told him it was straight. Why didn't Holy I? I should have stuck to the I said 31. <laughs> cut, cut it right, so I said 31. That's so late. Sweet. Well, thanks for watching. If, uh, if we didn't answer your question, give our gearheads a call. They'll be happy to answer any further questions you may have. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll keep making more videos like this one. We'll see you guys out on the trails. Yeah, let's go ride it. You.